All right, what's going on everybody? In this video, we're gonna be talking about horizontal asymptotes and limits at infinity. More specifically in this video, we'll start off by talking about the definition of horizontal asymptotes, right? I just wanna make sure everybody's on the same page with you know, what horizontal asymptotes are and what they have to do with limits at infinity, okay? And once we've done that, I'm just gonna do some quick examples of finding horizontal asymptotes. Okay, these are just going to be really quick and nice, and then we'll move on to some weirder stuff, and I'll talk about a weird kind of infinite limit that we're going to see a lot of, right? And so we'll talk about that. Then we're going to move on to the horizontal asymptotes of rational functions, and what rational functions are, right? We got to remember this. I didn't actually, I don't think I knew this for a while. Um, a rational function is like a polynomial over a polynomial. Right? So you have like a polynomial in the numerator and a polynomial in the denominator. Okay, that's what a rational function is. Just so everybody's up to speed on what I mean when I say that. Okay, now we're gonna see some interesting things. So we'll just be doing some more examples down here. Okay, it'll be the exact same thing, just more finding horizontal asymptotes. And we'll be finding it with, uh, you know, some weird things with negatives that we need to watch out for. And also what happens when we have a radical in our rational function or just a radical in general. How do we deal with that? Okay, and then we'll end off with just some practice finding horizontal asymptotes. Okay, so uh, yeah that's what is going to be in this video. Now, before we get into this video, I quickly wanted to mention that I do have my full Calculus One course in the description down below. Now, in this course, I have a bunch more practice problems that me and you can go through together. I have the worksheets, and then I have videos to go along with those worksheets. Now, it's just a, it's a great chance for me to get to help you one-on-one -on -one with anything that you're struggling with, and you know, really, even even like I get this because I am you know I'm in college right now I'm I'm watching YouTube videos to help me in class and you know what I'll realize is that I'll watch one video and then you know I'll start to forget some stuff after a while and so you know it'd be great if that video had some practice problems to go with it that had another video attached to it right it would be great if there was a way to you know better retain that information that I learned in that video and that's exactly what I'm trying to give you in the course so again if you're interested in that definitely check out that link in the description down below so let's get into this video I want to start off by talking about the definition of horizontal asymptotes right and you know these are really important in the real world right we care about what happens to systems as time approaches infinity right for example like if we have something like a spring does it keep oscillating as time increases on and on and on, right? Or does it stop after a while? Or, you know, like, like things like that, okay? And so I have an example here of my subscriber count. Um, nice. <laughs> uh, can't believe I made this. The idea with, with this was, well, what is the, the end behavior like of this graph, right? Do my subscribers go to infinity? Does my <laughs> clout go to infinity? Or does it level off after a while? What's going to happen to my subscriber count, right? And in the case on the right here, we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals L, right? There's this line, this horizontal line that this curve is getting like infinitely close to, but it's never touching it, right? It's never passing it, it's never touching it. And so that's what a horizontal asymptote is. Now, if you write this as a limit, right, the one on the left, right, you can see that this curve is going to infinity. And so we say that as, well, as time goes to infinity, right, this curve, S of t, is going to go to infinity in the y direction, right? And so that's what that means there. On the right-hand side where we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals l, as time goes to infinity, right, this curve, S of t, is going to get closer and closer to L, right? That's the idea with, with limits, right? It's gonna get closer and closer to the Y value of L, okay? And so again, in the case on the right, we say that there's a horizontal asymptote at Y equals L, okay? And so let's see if I have any more good information here. Um, basically just what I've already stated here, uh, that's a horizontal line. It's coming, it comes infinitely close to it. It never touches it, uh, and yeah, that that line's called a, a horizontal asymptote. Now, this line is going to be called a horizontal asymptote 
if it doesn't have to just be a limit as as your x value as your you know your independent variable approaches infinity right you could also talk about negative infinity right because we could have a horizontal asymptote let's say that you know this graph extended and it went down here right and maybe there's some line down here that it gets infinitely close to but never touches okay there'd be another horizontal asymptote down here and so that is just uh, another thing that we need to watch out for, right? When we talk about n behavior, which is essentially, you know, what this is, right? It's like n behavior from algebra two and, and pre-calc or whatever. Uh, when we talk about this, we don't just care about infinity. We care about, well, I think infinity would be that way for you guys. We also care about negative infinity as well. Okay. So we got to keep track of both of those. So doing some quick examples here, I do want to uh, have this example as our first example because it's going to pop up a lot, okay? We're going to have to be remembering this exact example for everything else we do in this video. The example here is to find the horizontal asymptotes of the function f of x equals 1 over x. And as I just stated over here, there's two places where horizontal asymptotes can occur, right? When we take the limit as x approaches infinity and the limit as x approaches negative infinity. So first we'll start off by taking the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x, right? We want to see if there is a horizontal asymptote in this graph as x goes to infinity, okay? And I'll show you what that means graphically in just a second. Well, let's think here. As x goes to infinity, what happens to 1 over x? Well, the denominator here would be getting bigger and bigger and bigger, right? And so if you have a fraction that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger in the denominator, right? So you get something like, let's say we have 1 over 2, 1 over 4, 1 over... 10, 1 over 100, right? You can see here that well, one half is a lot bigger than 1 over 100, right? And, and, and that just keeps progressing on and on and on, right? It gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And so eventually this thing goes, it just goes to zero, right? It's getting closer and closer to zero. So the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x is going to be zero, right? That's, you know, as your denominator gets bigger and bigger and bigger, your entire fraction will go to zero. If your denominator was getting smaller and smaller and smaller, right? Like you were getting things like one over one and then one over 0.5, one over 0.2, one over 0.1, right? Now, these things are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And you can check that with a calculator or just rewrite the decimals as fractions. And then it might become a little more clear to you how that happens, okay? But that, in that case, we would have something going to infinity. And we'll have an example of that later. But I just wanted to point that out quick. Now let's do the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 1 over x. For this case, well, yeah, x is going to negative infinity this time. But yeah, it, it's still getting larger and larger and larger. Now it's just negative, right? But again, if we're getting a larger and larger denominator... It really doesn't matter what the sign is. This entire fraction is going to, well, get smaller and smaller and smaller, and it goes to zero. Okay? And so, yeah, we do have a horizontal asymptote here, and we would have two, but both of these limits give the same horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, right? And so there's only one horizontal asymptote, and that's, again, at y equals zero. Okay? Just making sure that we're on the same page here graphically what this is actually saying right this is the graph of i know these the axes aren't perfectly aligned here but this is the graph of y equals one over x right and as you can see right yes we have a vertical asymptote here that doesn't really matter right now we're talking about horizontal asymptotes as we go to infinity right we're getting closer and closer to y equals zero but we're not touching it right as we go to negative infinity, right, we're again, we're getting closer and closer to y equals zero again. Okay? So that's the idea. These are called horizontal asymptotes. They're lines that we are, we are getting infinitely close to, but never touching as we go to infinity or negative infinity. Okay? So really useful for like n behavior. Now I have another example here. Okay? We're going to find the horizontal asymptotes of the function f of x equals y uh, 1 over x minus 1. Now, for this graph, right, 
this is going to be pretty much the exact same thing as one over X. I mean, it looks like you have a little shift down here or something like that, but really, yeah, it, this is no different than one over X uh, in with its end behavior. You're going to see that in a second. We're going to start off with the same way that we did before. We're going to take a first a limit as X approaches infinity. And then later on in this problem, we'll take a limit as X approaches negative infinity. First with the limit as X approaches infinity. Let's see here. As X gets bigger and bigger and bigger, this fraction is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger in the denominator. So the entire fraction as a whole will get smaller and smaller and smaller, and it will go to zero. Same reasoning as before with the one over X. Okay. If you didn't understand this, you're not going to understand this part. So just make sure that you understand this. Cause again, we're going to use it in the rest of the video. So what I want you to notice here is that, yeah, we have a negative one here, right? That's really the only difference between this example and the last example, but it doesn't really matter. Why doesn't it matter? Because this X is kind of overpowering it, right? X is going to infinity. It's becoming infinitely large. And so this minus one really isn't significant here. It's like having one over a billion, blah, 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 so many zeros minus one. Okay. This minus one is so insignificant at that point. And that's a common theme that we're going to see throughout this video. So just uh, keep, in, keep an eye on that. Now the limit as X approaches negative infinity is the other limit that I'd said we'd do. And this is going to be the same exact idea, right? This denominator is getting larger and larger and larger. Yeah, it's going to be negative, but that really doesn't matter, right? If this denominator gets larger and larger and larger, this entire fraction will get smaller and smaller and smaller and go to zero. Okay. For a horizontal asymptotes, it's going to be whatever these limits say, right? Okay, as long as they're not infinite and they're not here, they're zero. And so our horizontal asymptote for y equals one over x minus one is at y equals zero. Okay, awesome. So that is some pretty easy like <laughs> limit stuff compared to the other stuff that we're gonna do. Okay. This is a weirder example. This is a weird infinite limit where you're going to end up with, I mean, if you just plug in, like, you know, you have the limit as X approaches infinity of X squared minus X here. If you just plug in infinity here, you'd get like an infinity squared minus infinity, right? And I mean, really you, infinity squared is, wouldn't that still be infinity, right? And then you get infinity minus infinity. And what the heck is that, right? Like this, this entire thing just doesn't really make much sense, right? Infinity minus infinity, what? <laughs> okay. And so what I have written down here is that that my friends makes zero sense. So what do we do now? We can't plug in infinity because infinity isn't a number. Okay. That's the first thing that I want you to see. We can't just like plug in infinity. Like we plug in any number. So, so this entire thing that I've written here, it's wrong. Okay. And so the idea with infinity is that it's a concept right? It's a concept. Infinity is not a number like two or four or six, right? It's the idea of going on forever and ever and ever, right? Like as X, like we have a limit as X approaches infinity. We're talking about the limit as X goes on and on and on to, you know, forever. Okay. That's the idea of what infinity is. It's not a number. It's a concept. Okay. So we can't treat it like a number. It's not going to play by those same rules that numbers do. So we're going to have to do a little bit of thinking here. Okay. For this limit. Now what we could do, okay. We have this limit here that I'll drag down. Okay. And with this limit, there's a couple of things that we could do here. First, we could factor out an X. Okay. And if we factor out an X here, you'll see that, well, we can probably understand this limit a lot more, right? we don't have like two conflicting infinities, right? Like we don't have like an infinity minus infinity idea. We have, this is going to be an infinitely large X, right? An infinitely large number. And we have, that's going to be multiplied another ginormous number, right? And so you can see that, well, this would equal infinity, right? This would go off to infinity. There's no like X being subtracted here. There's no like infinity being subtracted here. Okay. 
But this is, you know, while you can look at it this way, that's not really what I'm trying to get you to see here. Okay. Because what I want you to see is that common theme of overpowering, right? I, I did talk about that earlier in the orange section. Okay. Watch what happens if we start plugging in some test points here. I'm just going to plug in some X values as X gets bigger and bigger and bigger and it approaches infinity. Okay. If we talk about, let's see here, I got to get to my notes. If we talk about X equals two, right? We'll just plug that into this. That's two squared minus two, right? And that's four minus two, that's two. Uh, X equals five. We plug that in, that's five squared minus five. And that is, well, 20, right? And then X equals 10 is going to give you a 10 squared minus 10, that is 90, right? And, and watch what's happening to these numbers, right? These are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And they're going off to that infinity that we would think they would. Let's even try another one. Let's try X equals 100. Well, we have 100 squared minus 100, right? You would just double the zeros here. Uh, and so you'd get 10,000 and you subtract 100 to get 9,900, right? And so, yeah, you know, these numbers are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay. But I want you to understand why that's happening. Okay. It's happening because as X approaches infinity, the X squared overpowers the X. Okay. This is very important. And so I'm going to even write an arrow to this and just say very important. Okay. The idea with this is that, well, this X squared is becoming so much more valuable than the X, right? The X isn't really subtracting much off anymore. Once you get to the hundred, the 10 and the hundred, right? It's subtracting off a significantly less portion of the original X squared. Okay, so, so hopefully you can see how the, the X starts bec to become a lot more meaningless as we increase X, right? Because the X squared is going to increase a lot quicker. Just think about the graphs of X squared and X, right? X squared goes up like this and X just stays linear, okay? I don't want to over explain that, but, but hopefully that starts to make sense. Okay, so if you understand the idea of overpowering, the rest of this video is become, going to become a lot easier for you. Okay, and so hopefully you can see here how the the limit as x approaches infinity of that's a terrible looking infinity infinity of x squared minus x is going to equal infinity. Okay, and that is the answer for that question. Okay. So again, that idea of overpowering is really going to help us with the horizontal asymptotes of rational functions. Okay. So I want to keep the last example in mind here. Okay. I want to keep that X squared minus X example in mind. And we're going to try this one on for size. We're going to try the limit as X approaches infinity of a, again, a rational function, a polynomial over another polynomial. And this one is three X squared plus X plus two all over X minus five. Now, there's a couple different ways you can think about this example. Okay, there's a division trick, which I'm going to show you in a second. But there's also, you know, you can think about this in the overpowering sense, right? As x approaches infinity, if we just look at the numerator here, right? The three x squared is going to become significantly more like valuable, I guess, it's going to overpower the x and the two, they really won't matter that much. It's all we really care about in the numerator is the three x squared. Okay, it's just like with n behavior when you were, you know, like in algebra two or pre-calc or whenever you talked about this, right? You have your function and you have like your entire polynomial. Okay, and all you really care about for n behavior is the biggest term of, with, with the x's, right? The, the highest power of x, that's all you care about. You don't care about this stuff, you care about this stuff. Okay, it's the same thing here, now we're just doing it with limits. Anyways. We don't care about this stuff. We only care about the three X squared in the numerator and in the denominator, the minus five won't really matter just the X. Okay. And so, well, let's think about it. The numerator versus the denominator, which one wins out? Well, the three X squared is going to be a lot bigger, right? Than the X, the X is going to be 
you know, not nearly as big. And so, well, the three X squared wins. And so this entire fraction gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And this ends up being infinity. So hopefully you were able to follow that like reasoning, but if you weren't, let me show you a division trick. Here's what you can do. And, and when I see what I like to do when the uh, highest power of X is in the numerator, okay, which I'll show you different cases in the next couple examples. But when the highest power of X is in the numerator, what I like to just do is divide by the highest power of X in the denominator. Okay, it just makes it a little easier to see negatives, uh, you know, different things with negatives, which we'll talk about in the I think it's the like light blue section or something. <laughs> um, anyways, we're going to divide by X everywhere. And what that means is we're going to multiply by a one over X over one over X. If we do that, we get a three X squared plus X plus two all over X. And that's going to be all over a X minus five over X. Okay. We can split this over X up to each term okay, and make it look really nice. So we could write this as the limit as X approaches infinity of three X squared over X plus X over X plus two over X. Then we're over a, uh, there's an X over X here and a five over X here. Okay. Now I want you to notice some things. Okay. There's some interesting things that are about to happen. This and this term are the exact same examples that we were doing in the orange section, right? With the one over X, the limit as X approaches infinity, right? These are the exact same thing. They're both going to go to zero, right? X is getting bigger and bigger. And so the entire fraction goes to zero. The other stuff, I guess we could just simplify, right? X over X is one. This is one as well. And so this is equal to the limit as X approaches infinity of a three X plus one over one, right? Which really you could just write that as a three X plus one. And hopefully uh, I didn't go too fast there. I got the three X from this part. Okay. And then the one comes from here. Okay. Now it's really easy to see what happens as X approaches infinity, right? This thing will just get bigger and bigger and bigger and it goes off to infinity. Okay. And so there you can see a little more like uh, it's a little more clear now um, rather than just talking about the gladiator example, like, like, you know, thinking about which one wins um, and all that stuff and like having some giant battle to the death, uh, you know, in your head when you're talking about limits, but hopefully that makes sense. So we're going to move on to our next example here. And for this example, we're going to do the exact same thing. But now with our rational function, we have that our highest power of X is in the denominator, not the numerator, right? We have an X cubed in the denominator. We only have an X squared in the numerator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide everything by X cubed. Okay. And so I'm going to do the division trick first and okay. Now we're finding horizontal asymptotes. I want to, I do want to note that it's not like just one limit anymore. But we start with the limit as X approaches infinity anyway for horizontal asymptotes. And what we do, take this, bring it down. And well, I'm going to divide everything by X cubed now. Okay. So hopefully you get how that division works from the previous example. And so I'm going to go a little bit faster here. We're going to divide everything by X cubed. And so I'm just going to divide each term by X cubed. Oops. Okay, there we go. And so now let's do a little bit of simplification because I know it's kind of weird seeing all these X cubes in the denominator. Okay, keep going here. We're going to simplify that. That becomes a one over X. We get a one over X cubed. We can already see over here that this is going to go to zero, right? It's the same thing as that one over X example, right? It's the same thing as what's going to happen to this. It's also going to go away, right? And uh, this five over X cubed will go away in the same exact fashion. And so will the two X over X cubed, right? 
because the two x over x cubed, that simplifies to two over x squared, right? And again, you have an x in the denominator, okay? And so that makes the entire fraction go to zero. And that's why I wanted to do that example in the orange section, because I told you it was gonna pop up a lot and I meant it, okay? And so really all that's left here, and, and I guess I could have expanded that and already canceled out this. Uh, so I could have done that too. <laughs> but um, I guess I'll just keep it on for now. This ends up being equal to the limit as x approaches infinity uh, of one over x, right? And, and that equals zero, right? We, we've done that before. So, and actually there's nothing to really circle yet because that's not the answer to this problem, right? The answer to this problem is the horizontal asymptotes, okay? So while this is a horizontal asymptote, we'll need to write it as that. We'll need to write it as like y equals zero. The other thing that we need to consider for horizontal asymptotes is the limit as x approaches negative infinity. And if we're approaching negative infinity, really nothing different is gonna happen here, right? We still can simplify this thing to being one over x, right? And we know that that limit, right? The limit as x approaches negative infinity of one over x is again zero, right? And so it's again, it's the same thing, same example, uh, like the, the orange section, and we get a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, okay? So hopefully I didn't go too quick there, right? It's just a lot of, you know, having your x cubes in the denominator, right? If the x, if you still have an x left in the in the denominator, that's all going to go away. So that's the second example. So far we've done an example where the highest power of x was on the top, where the highest power of x was on the bottom, and now we're going to say, well, what happens if they're the same on the top and the bottom? Okay, you know, what? Who wins that battle? And so that's exactly what this example is. We have the limit as x approaches infinity of three x squared minus x minus two all over five x squared plus four x plus one. The highest power of x in top and bottom is the x squared and that, that's shared on both top and bottom. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do that division trick again. We're gonna divide by the highest power on the top and bottom. If we do that, we get a three x squared over x squared minus a x over x squared minus a two over x squared. We get a five x squared over x squared plus a four x over x squared plus a one over x squared, right? And if we simplify this, I want you to, again, look at everything that cancels off here, right? Here we end up with an X in the denominator, right? We're going to have a, I mean, this simplifies to be a one over X, right? So as X approaches infinity, that goes to zero, right? That goes to zero. Two over X squared. Again, you have an X in the denominator that doesn't go away. That goes to zero. Same thing happens here and here. They become insignificant as X approaches infinity. Right? The division trick is just another way to show that. Okay? And I want to go slow with that. And if you want to go slower, if you want to write it out with more steps, if you want to simplify these before you uh, you know, can can start canceling things off, feel free to. Okay? I just don't want to take up too much of your time with this video. So 3x squared over x squared, that simplifies to be 3. And then 5x squared over x squared simplifies to be a 5. And so really this just ends up equaling three fifths, okay? And so I want you to realize what has just happened here, right? All this answer really was the answer to this limit as x approaches infinity, right? As we expected, all these other terms that are not x squared become useless, right? They fall off after a while. That's the idea of the overpowering that we've looked at in the in the orange section and in the yellow section, more importantly. And then what ends up happening here is that the three X squared and the five X squared are kind of battling it out. And well, since they both have an X squared in it, you can kind of think of that as, as canceling off, right? And so you have it as a three over five. Like maybe a better way to write that would be, well, since all these other terms don't matter anymore, this really ends up just being the limit as X approaches infinity of three X squared over five X squared, right? And then you can see a little bit better how the X squareds cancel off and you get that three fifths, okay? 
So hopefully that makes a little more sense to you now of, of why that happens. So now let's look at, well, you know, what have we talked about so far with the three main cases? Okay. Well, there's the first case that we talked about, which is where the numerator has the highest power. The numerator is going to win out here, right? And that's when, if you take a limit as X approaches plus or minus infinity, whatever, right? That's when you're going to get the answer of infinity or negative infinity, right? To see whether it's going to be infinity or negative infinity, what I like to do instead of just dividing by uh, the highest power of X anywhere is I'll just divide by the highest power of X in the denominator, right? So in this case, right? I would divide by just an X on top and bottom. Okay. That's going to help you a little bit more to just see where negatives come in. And I'll show you that again later in this video. So we'll divide by the highest power in the denominator. Okay. We'll do more examples of that, but there's also the case where the denominator wins. Okay. The denominator wins when you have the highest power of X in the denominator. And in that case, it, it it's really just like a one over X example. That's where you get a zero. Okay. Doesn't matter whether you're going to infinity or negative infinity, you still get a zero. Then lastly, there's the let the battle begin case. And that's when you have the highest power of X being shared on the top and the bottom. Here we have an X squared and an X squared. If you understand what we just talked about in the last problem, right? You should be able to tell me actually right away what this limit would be, no matter whether we're going to positive infinity or negative infinity. I'll let you think about that for a second. Okay. And uh, really here, this should just be one third, right? It's the coefficients on the X squared. You got a one here and a three here. So it's one over three. That'll actually be the answer to this. Okay. But if you're having trouble seeing that right away, you know, if you still feel a little shaky with that, just divide everything by the highest power of X. Like do that division trick that we did in the last example, right? That's all you got to do. Awesome. So now let's talk about negatives, right? Let's talk about that idea, you know, what I was talking about before with dividing by the highest power in the denominator, why you have to do that and seeing the difference between having an infinity and a negative infinity. So let's talk about the limit as X approaches infinity of X squared plus X all over three minus X. For this example, right, you see that the, the the numerator has the higher power of X, right? You expect it to win out, and so you would assume that the answer would be infinity, right? But that's not quite true for this. And to fully understand that, right, we need to do a little more analysis here. Let's do the division trick. Let's divide top and bottom here by the highest power in the denominator. That's the X. So we'll divide by X. We'll divide these pieces by X. We'll divide the denominator by X. Okay. And well, we can simplify this, right? I'll just do the full simplification here. I don't want to cancel anything off yet, but we get a, the X squared over X gives us a X. The X over X gives us a one. Okay. The three over X, I, I guess I lied. I will cancel that off, right? That's something where the X stays in the denominator. We're going to get rid of that. And then here in the denominator, notice that you get a negative one, right? That's what that is. And so now tell me what happens as X approaches infinity. Well, yeah, in the numerator, you're going to get a positive infinity, right? But that's going to be divided by a negative number. And so a positive, right? A positive divided by a negative is a negative number. And so in this case, it's not going to be positive infinity. It's going to be negative infinity. Now you could do this out a little bit more, right? You could think of this as a negative X plus one, right? Like you, if you divide through by a negative one, it's the same thing as multiplying by a negative one. Okay. Um, you know, the one doesn't change the value. It's just a negative that matters. Okay. And you know, you can either put a negative, um, like you could either write it as something as negative five halves or as uh, five over negative two. It's the same exact like number. Okay. Um, so sorry, that might be a little over explaining, but hopefully it makes sense, right? This becomes negative X minus one. And if you look at the limit as this approaches infinity, right? 
that might uh, make a little more sense now why that would be negative infinity. Okay, so if you if you're having trouble seeing that you can divide through by that negative one. Okay, so that's the idea. That's how we got negative infinity for this example. And let's move on to the other example that I have, which is the limit as x approaches negative infinity of the same exact rational function. So if we do that division example again, we'll do the exact same thing. We would end up with, again, the limit as x approaches uh, infinity of x plus 1. Okay. This time I will actually divide it through, we'll analyze it like I was going to before. Okay. And one th quick thing before I move on. Notice how I took from this. I didn't have to start all the way from the beginning because everything that we did here was not specific to, you know, us having infinity here, right? Like all we did here was we were just like, you know, multiplying by one over X, right? That could have been done no matter what we had as a, the value here. Okay. So, you know, I'm just saving us the, the, the paper space to, um, just copy this down. Okay. And you can do the same. So what I'll write this as is I'll write it as a negative X plus one, right? And, and so you could write that as a negative X minus one. And so as x approaches negative infinity here, well, this is a negative x. And so if you plug in larger and larger negative numbers, this is going to become a larger and larger positive number, right? The negatives cancel off. And so this is going to go to positive infinity. And that's your answer there. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. Just some stuff to watch out for with negatives. Now let's move on to something a little more complicated. I think it's probably the most complicated part of this uh, entire video. We're going to talk about radicals, okay? And so we're going to need to be careful when we see radicals, right? When you see radicals, when anybody sees radicals in any of these problems, right? We all get a little skittish. We're all like, eh, mm. <laughs> radicals. Um, and I generally don't act this, I don't really act out that much during videos. I don't, I'm just really tired right now, guys. <laughs> uh, anyways, the limit as x approaches infinity here of the square root of x squared plus one minus x. Now you might be like, oh, okay, this is the exact same example as the yellow section, right? Where you have an x squared minus x. I would say no, because you have a radical here, right? And so this x squared, since it's being square rooted, right? It kind of acts more like an x under here. Okay. And so really it actually kind of becomes like an X minus X case, but I'll save you on that. If you just have like a line here with radicals. Okay. And, and you kind of like, you can't really figure it out. Um, like, like, like just kind of like mentally, right. What I would do here is I would just do a little bit of multiplying by a conjugate. This is a technique we've used before in past videos with limits and hopefully you've used before at this point, right? You multiply by a conjugate. So you just flip the sign between the first and second term, right? So we flip that minus to a plus. And what that allows us to do is it gets rid of our, our radicals completely in the numerator. And notice we'll get like in the denominator, we'll get all these values of X multiplying together or not multiplying together, uh, they'll be adding, they, they won't be any subtractions. And so it'll be a little easier to interpret. Okay. So let's actually go through and figure out what this is. We get the limit as X approaches infinity. Okay. Of, well, when we multiply by conjugates, there's no middle terms when we get here, right? That's the whole reason why we multiply by conjugates. And so here, when we multiply the first two terms, we just get an X squared plus one. And then we multiply the negative X and the plus X and we get a negative X squared. And now you'll see here that the X squared and the negative X squared are going to cancel, excuse me, cancel off. So in the denominator, we'll have that X squared plus one, and now we'll have a plus X. And so simplifying a little bit here, we'll get the limit as X approaches infinity of a one over the square root of X squared plus one plus X. Now here it should be a lot easier to see what happens, right? Here, as X approaches infinity, this gets bigger and bigger and bigger. This gets bigger and bigger and bigger. They're being added together, 
And so you just get a infinitely large denominator and that, you know, that's the same exact thing as what happens in one over X, right? That is the same example we started with in the orange section. So this is zero. Okay. So it's, I know that this seems a, lot, a little weird with radicals, right? But just try not to get too freaked out. I, you know, that's exactly what I would do when I was in Calc 1 and that was not a good thing for me, right? When you see these radicals, if it's just like you don't have a fraction, right? And you have this like subtraction going on. So you don't know like which term is winning, whether it's like this term or this term. Is this going to be infinity? Is this going to be zero? Is it going to be negative infinity? Who knows, right? What I would suggest is just multiplying by conjugates. And that way, instead of having things that are being subtracted, you have things that are being added and it just becomes a lot easier for you to interpret. Let's move on to our next example, which is going to be significantly uh, more challenging. Well, I wouldn't say significantly, but it's just going to be like, it's just going to be weird. Okay. And this example is to find the horizontal and vertical asymptotes of the function below. We haven't talked about vertical asymptotes first. So uh, what I want to do is just quickly tackle that first. Okay. But try not to forget everything that we've learned in this video about horizontal asymptotes. Now, a great example where you get vertical asymptotes is in the graph y equals 1 over x. Okay, we talked about that before. And just to jog your memory a little bit, I'll even scroll back up to where I had that graph. Right? It was this graph right here. And, a hor you know, you had a vertical asymptote here. Right? This curve is never going to touch x equals 0, and, and neither is this part of the curve. So, where you end up getting these vertical asymptotes is where the denominator is zero. Okay. Now that doesn't guarantee that you'll get a vertical asymptote. We'll need to check that with limits, right? Because another, you know, like, for example, um, if you have like x squared minus one over x minus one, right? Like this function uh, at x equals one, th this won't have a vertical asymptote, right? Um, you could split this up to x minus 1 and x plus 1 over x minus 1, right? And the x minus 1s cancel. And so what that means is that, no, it's not like all of a sudden you don't get a 0 in the denominator. You still will because you have this here. But what ends up happening is you get something called a removable discontinuity, right? And a removable discontinuity is, you know, that's going to be... Um, not a vertical asymptote, right? It, it's something that looks like this. Okay. And if you're looking for more on continuity, uh, that's my last video. Okay. So you can go check that out. All right. So we're going to have to check with limits, right? We're, we're going to have to figure that out, but let's continue here. Vertical asymptotes. That's where the denominator is zero. The denominator is zero at, well, let's see add five to both sides. And this becomes a X equals five thirds. Okay, cool. So now we have to check this. Okay, so we're going to check both sides, right? We're going to check the limit from the left hand side from the negative side, right? And we're going to check the limit from the positive side, but we'll do that in a second. First, we're going to take this limit from the negative side. And for this, right, we got to do a little bit of thinking. It, it does take a little bit of like, kind of like thinking about this mentally, right? You're not really writing too much when you're thinking about these limits. But look in the numerator, right? If you plug in five thirds to this, you don't get a zero. You don't get an infinity. You don't care. Okay. That's generally how these limits go. If you don't get a zero or you don't get an infinity, there's nothing really special going on, right? There's, there's nothing like... You don't need to worry about the numerator here is what I'm saying. 3x minus 5, however, well, you know, you do get a, a 0 when you plug in 5 thirds, right? You, you do. That's the whole reason. That's what we figured out here. And so with this, right, we're approaching it from the negative side. So we're plugging in values of, of you know, of x that are slightly smaller than 5 thirds, right? They're getting ever so close to 5 thirds, but they're just a little bit smaller. And so what happens here is that, well, when you multiply this three by a value of X, that's just a little bit smaller than five thirds, the negative five kind of wins here. And so what happens is you get like 
you know, this is something like, it'd be like a 4.9 or a 4.95 or a 4.99, right? You're getting numbers that are smaller and smaller and smaller, but they're going to be negative when you subtract five, right? And so the denominator is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, but it's negative. And so what that means, right? If the denominator gets smaller and smaller and smaller is that the entire fraction blows up. And since it's negative, it's gonna go to negative infinity. Okay, and, and, and you know, of course you also have to check here, the denominator or the, the numerator is going to be positive, right? Uh, you can just, you know, check that out. The What's under the radical is going to be positive and the radical itself, like it's only gonna output something positive. So that's a little, that's a, a little nice to figure out. Looking at the limit from the positive side though, it's the same exact thought process, but now with the five thirds, right? Um, you are talking about values of, uh, the, you know, the three X that are just a little bit bigger than five, right? Like 5.05, 0, 5.01, uh, 5.001, 5 right? And when you subtract five, yes, these are getting smaller and smaller and smaller, right? We're approaching five thirds. Uh, well, sorry, we're approaching five thirds. Yeah. But when we multiply that by three, it's kind of like we're approaching five, but from the positive side, I don't want to overwhelm me with the words here, but hopefully you see the trend here, right? And so I, I would, this part can be a little tricky. Okay. So try to review this after we get done with this video. Okay. So anyways, yeah, we're getting smaller and smaller and smaller. We're positive. And so that means that instead of going to negative infinity, this will blow up to infinity. And this is characteristic of a vertical asymptote. We have, you know, one going this way, one going this way. You have a vertical asymptote. Okay, it's not like some removable discontinuity. And so we say that there is a vertical asymptote at x equals five thirds. Remember our vertical asymptotes are vertical lines and vertical lines have, uh, they just have like a x equals five thirds, right? That's how we label them. So that's one of our answers here. But this problem also asked for horizontal asymptotes. So we gotta figure those out. The horizontal asymptotes of this function are going to be a little bit tricky. Okay, for this function, right? And actually, we'll I'll start start off here. We're just going to do the first limit as x approaches infinity, right? That's the first limit we do. Then we do a limit as x approaches negative infinity. Now for the limit as x approaches infinity, what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by the highest power on top and bottom here because it's actually the same because. It is the same here. And why I say that is because you can kind of think of the X squared and the square root is canceling out. I kind of mentioned that earlier, right? And so really you can think of the highest power here being X instead of X squared. So I'm gonna to divide top and bottom by X. And so we're gonna write this as the limit as X approaches infinity of a square root of two X squared plus one all over X, right? The X is not in the square root. Um, let me make that a little clearer. There we go. That's going to be all over a three X over X minus a five over X. Okay. Now the five over X, right? This piece goes away. Okay. We know that, right? That's the same idea from before the X's cancel off here. Okay. And so the three is left over. And so we're left with this. Well, it's going to be something over three, right? We got to figure out what's this, what this piece is yet. Okay. So here's the problem. We have an X here. We have a square root here. How do we combine these things? Well, can't we say that, you know, X is equal to the square root of X squared, right? And, and that's how we can fit this X inside of the square root. Well, yeah, right. That's what X is, right? It's this, you know, this, uh, if, if you want to put X into a square root, well, you just make it a X squared because the square and the square root cancel off, like I mentioned earlier. And so we can write this as the square root of two X squared plus one, right? But we can actually shove in the X squared. And so we can write it like this. Okay. And we can split up that X squared. So we can actually write this as the limit as X approaches infinity 
of, I'm going to copy this thing down. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the x squared and split it up. Okay, now what you see here is pretty similar to what we saw in the denominator, right? We have that these x squareds cancel off. Okay, and then you just left with a two on top. And then here the one over x squared goes away. Why does the one over x squared go away? Well, because it's the same thing as, you know, you get your denominator that blows up, this thing goes to zero. And so the answer here that we're just left with is a square root of two over three. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. That's the limit as x approaches infinity. We also have to check the limit as x approaches negative infinity. Okay. Now, real quick, I want you to try this limit as x approaches negative infinity. Okay, I want you to give it a shot. The reason why I say this is because there's a really common mistake that people make with this. I actually made it myself when I was scripting this video. I had no idea where, like it just, it feel, I feel like it came out of nowhere, but I'm gonna explain it. Okay, so I do want you to try this example on your own, okay? And then I'm gonna go through it. This is where I'm gonna start, okay? We're still gonna divide top and bottom by x like we did before, right? But the problem with this is, and I need this limit out of here. The problem that we're gonna see here is that, well, you can't do this this thing, right? You can't put this x squared in here like that. And so if you did, you know, you'd probably end up with rad two over three again, right? It'd be the same thing, but that's not right. And that's the mistake I made too. When I was going over this and that's the mistake I would have made when I was in calc one, right? What actually happens here when you have the x equals the square root of x squared, right? Well, think about it. Let's duplicate this. Let's bring it down when we're talking about x approaching a negative number. It's you know, we're talking about negative values of X, right? Well, does this actually stand? We have like X would be something like negative three, right? Let's say that, you know, let's, let's plug in X equals negative three. We get a negative three, this gets squared, right? We get a negative three is equal to the square root of nine and we get a negative three equals three. That's not true. So, this actually isn't true for negative values of X. It's really strange. I didn't even see that. I, I honestly didn't know that. Uh, I really didn't. And I've been through all the calc classes, right? Uh, what you get when you take, what you actually end up getting is the absolute value of X on the right hand side. Okay, that's what you'll always get because you're squaring it, right? You're making it a positive number. And so that's kind of what the absolute value does. And so really what you have to do here is you have to negate it to make it equal again, to make it equal to X, right? And so X is not going to be equal to the square root of negative X squared, or sorry, it's not going to be equal to the square root of X squared. It's going to be equal to the negative square root of X squared. Okay. That's the one thing that you're going to have to uh, understand about this. Okay. Now you might be like, Oh my God, how am I going to know that for a test? I feel you like in, if you get it wrong, it's just a negative, right? It, so it's just going to be like a point or two off, but how I would think about it, right? Is, well, we have square roots, we have negative numbers, right? And so when you have that watch out for this trick, okay, because they can get you with this. Okay. Those evil people, they can get you with this. Okay. And so that's what I would think about it. Okay. Just, just, realize have this trick in the back of your mind always but really start thinking about it when you're talking about square roots okay that's when this should pop in your head okay end of story and you know when you have negative numbers with square roots okay so that's that i'm done explaining that <laughs> all right so let's duplicate this down okay and instead of this being a x i'm going to write it as a negative square root of x squared. Okay. Just like before this, these x's are going to cancel the five over x goes to zero. And we get that limit as x approaches negative infinity. The numerator, well, I'll just bring that negative out up top. And we get a two x squared plus one 
I'm actually going to save that radical for a second because I'm just going to write it once I know what the heck is going on. We're going to have an x squared in the denominator. I'm actually going to break that up and just stick it in like this. Right? And then I'll put the square root in because I know like where to put it now. And then I'm going to put this over 3. Okay? And now we get the same thing again, right? This is the same exact thing as the last problem. The one over x squared goes to zero. The x squareds cancel off. And so you get a negative rad two over three. And that's the other horizontal asymptote. Oops. Okay. And so the actual answer for this is the horizontal asymptotes are at y equals the square root of two over three. And the negative square root of two over three. Really interesting stuff. I really didn't see that coming at first when I was scripting this video. And then when I looked at the answer key, I was like, oh my God, I'm wrong. <laughs> and then I just went back and I, I realized this fact, which I should have known, but I just didn't. <laughs> so hopefully you learn from my mistake, you watch out from that. Okay. So let's move on to the last segment of this video, the last section, the purple section, and that is on practice. Okay, we're just going to do some practice with this. Remember, you know, our our three cases from before, we talked about when the, the numerator wins, when it has the higher power of x, we talked about when the denominator wins, when it has the higher power of x, we talked about these powers competing when they're the same on top and bottom. That's the example we're about to do here. And you know, we just talked about like, like dealing with radicals and negatives and stuff like that, right? That's all what happened in this video as a quick verbal recap. So I think I have four practice problems for you here, right? I have the one, two, three, and four, okay? This one will be the longest one right here. Number three, okay? Okay, so let's do the limit as x approaches infin negative infinity of this guy, okay? If you've been following with this video, okay, you could see here that the, we, you know, we have the same power of, of x right on top and bottom. That's the highest power we get x cubed top and bottom right none of this really will end up mattering okay because it's not as high of a power of x as the two terms out here what we care about is the coefficients right here okay and that is four over two that's so our answer is actually going to be two here okay now i do want to note that this trick you can only really do that when you have a negative infinity or an infinity. Okay, if you don't have that, well, then you, uh, you know, like if you have something like the limit as x approaches zero or something like that, that is a completely different story. You're going to have to handle that a bit differently. You can't just do the exact same trick because now you're not talking about end behavior anymore. Okay, maybe you're looking at something like a vertical asymptote. Okay, if you're not sure how this equals two, then divide everything by x cubed, like we've done before, right? Do a 4x cubed plus 6x squared minus 2, divide everything by x cubed here. Okay, uh, 2x cubed over x cubed minus 4x over x cubed plus 5 over x cubed, so we're just dividing everything by x cubed. And then we notice what you know everything pretty much cancels right the x cubes cancel off the x cubes cancel off here we this entire thing goes to zero because we're left with a you know that simplifies as six over x right it's the same idea as the orange section which i keep mentioning right same thing here goes to zero goes to zero we're left with a four over two that's two okay so hopefully that makes sense that is going to be our answer for this problem moving on we're going to find the limit uh, as x approaches infinity of x minus x to the square root of x all over x to the three halves plus 3x minus 5 now this problem really is it's not much different than what we were doing already right um it's the same exact problem pretty much as what we had in in, in the last problem that we just did it's just a little bit of exponent practice. Do you know how to work fractional exponents? And do you know what to do with that x squared of x? That's actually what this question is really about. That's the kicker. Okay. And so 
for this numerator, right, you need to realize that you have an x squared of x here, and x times the square root of x is the same thing as x to the first times x to the one half, right? And that's x to the three halves. And so really, if you rewrite the numerator with the highest power of x first, which is actually over here, you get a negative x to the three halves plus x. And then you put it over the denominator, which I'll just copy down because I'm lazy. I'm not lazy. I mean, I just don't want to like waste y'all's time. <laughs> um, but anyways, you get another case where you're having the x's battle it out, right? They both have the same power on top and bottom. And so just like we, ha we have in the last example, we care about the coefficients on them. Here we have a negative one. Here we have a one. Negative one divided by one is negative one. So the answer here is negative one. Okay. For our next example, like I said, this is going to be the longest one. Okay. And then we're going to end off with a nice little uh, happy example. <laughs> okay. But this one is to find the horizontal and vertical asymptotes of the following curve. Okay. Um, this problem isn't hard with the horizontal asymptotes right? But it is kind of difficult with the vertical asymptotes because you're going to have more of them. So uh, we'll take care of the horizontal asymptotes first this time. We'll switch it up. Okay. And for horizontal asymptotes, we first want to take the limit as x approaches infinity. Then we want to take the limit as x approaches negative infinity. So dealing with this first infinite limit, this first limit at infinity, which is should be the name of this video if I did things right. Um, if we look here, well, we have the x cubed winning out, right? That's the highest power of x here. And so, you know, since that's higher than anything in the denominator, we know that this thing is going to blow up to infinity, right? The numerator wins out. You get a numerator that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger at a much faster rate than the denominator. And so this thing goes to infinity, right? So to check that you don't get any negatives, though, what I think is good to do is and I even said this I believe right in the green section right when we have that the numerator wins you know we want to check is this going to be infinity or negative infinity and so what I like to do is we'll divide by the highest power in the denominator okay that's if you want to do the division trick you can also look at it different ways uh, I can show you a different way to look at it right now if you want to um, since you can't talk to me right now I'm gonna assume that you want me to show you a different way <laughs> um, I can tell that this is going to be infinity here because this x cube blows up, right? And so we know that the numerator will be positive, right? Because x cubed is positive, right? Uh, you know, as x approaches a, a positive infinity, right? But the denominator here, well, you know, the x squared is the biggest, right? And so the negative 6x and the 5 don't matter, right? The x squared is going to be positive, right? No matter what, right? It's being squared, it's going to be a positive number. And so we get the denominators positive two. And so you get a positive divided by a positive, and that's, well, a positive number. And so here we're going to get a positive infinity. Okay. In that same spirit, we're going to do, and if, by the way, if that didn't make sense, then feel free to you know, do the division like we did before in, I believe, like the green section is when we did that. And we did that also in the um, like, uh, the cyan section or the aqua section, whatever you want to call that. Um, so let's do the limit as x approaches negative infinity, right? That's the other limit that we have to do with horizontal asymptotes. Now here, we're going to use the same reasoning as we just did, okay? We know that this thing blows up because the numerator wins, right? So it's going to be either infinity or negative infinity. Which one? Well, like we said, you know, the, the denominator is being squared, right? And so this is going to be positive no matter what, right? Because whatever you plug in here, it's going to be positive because it's getting squared. And this stuff doesn't matter because it's not as, as a higher power of, of x, right? It's not to an x squared level. It gets overpowered, right? And so... You know, hopefully this is all coming full circle for you now, so it's easier for me to explain this conceptually to you. This x cubed minus x doesn't share the same fate. It's actually going to be negative, 
right? It's going to blow up and be negative. The reason for that is because we're going to negative values of X, right? We have to worry about that. And since that those negative values of X's are going to be cubed, right? It stays negative. And so like, you know, negative one cubed is negative one, right? And so that stays. And so it's actually going to be negative infinity here because we have a negative divided by a positive and that's negative. Okay. Um, just some thoughts here as I'm going through this, I feel like the way I just explained it might have gone like a little bit too, I feel like I went a little bit too conceptual for some of you. If that's the case, again, like I said, just, I want to take a step back here. Um, go try the other way that we talked about earlier in this video, where we just divide everything by the highest power of X in the denominator. Okay. Same idea. I just don't, I want to make sure that I'm, you know, teaching in a way that's helping like as many people as possible. And so if that really, if with the way I just explained, it doesn't make as much sense, try the other way. <laughs> okay. But since we go off to infinity and negative infinity here, that means that we have a graph that kind of looks like, like this or something like Y equals X cubed. And so, you know, we don't have any horizontal asymptotes here, right? A horizontal asymptote would look something like this, right? Where we have like a curve that gets closer and closer to a horizontal line, but it never passes it, never touches it. So there's no horizontal asymptotes. Now we're going to do the longer part of the problem and that's vertical asymptotes. And for this, we look at the, um, we look at where the denominator is zero. The denominator was the X squared minus six X plus five and two numbers that add to be negative six and multiply to be five are going to be negative one and negative five. Okay. From here, we get a X equals one X equals five. And so these are the two places that we need to check for our vertical asymptotes. Okay. Um, I should have mentioned to you guys in the beginning of this problem to try this on your own, because I think that's what's going to help you most. But uh, if you want to take it from here and try it, feel free. Okay. I mean, I feel like it'll only help you more if you're trying it on your own and then coming back to the video, right? Because then you know what you really need to work on. But uh, anyways, let's look at one first. We'll look at it from the negative side. Now we can do some factoring here, right? To see if there's going to be any removable discontinuities here. And so I'm going to keep going with this. And here we get a, well, we can factor out an X from the top and then we get an X, X squared minus one. Right. And so since we're left with that X squared minus one out of this, we can factor that even further and write that as X minus one X plus one. Okay. We'll put that over a X minus one X minus five. Okay. And now we see the X minus ones cancel off. Right. And so this limit is, you know, we can now plug in one, right? Cause we've gotten rid of that zero in the denominator. Okay. And so, well, let's do that. We get a one here that'll be multiplied by a, that'll be two when we plug in one. So we get a two over, this is going to be a negative four when we plug in one. And so that is going to be a negative one half. Okay. That'll be the same thing when we do the limit as X approaches one from the positive side, right? It makes no difference. Okay. I'll show you where the negative and the positives do make a difference in just a second. Okay. That'll be where we don't have a removable discontinuity. Um, where we do have a removable discontinuity, right? So maybe this graph looks something like this with circle in between, right? The limit from the negative side, which will be from this side along the curve, right? Along the curve, which means that we're coming along this way, right? And so that limit is going to equal the limit from the right hand side, right? From it, we're going to be going along the curve. Like I just did from this direction now. Right. And, and so these two meet at the exact same place. And so, you know, yeah, these limits are going to be equal. It wouldn't make sense for them not to be. It's just a removable discontinuity. Right. We're not going to get a jump discontinuity. Right. Something like 
um, like this, right? That's really only in piecewise functions. Okay, and so yeah, this is not going to have a vertical asymptote here, right? There's no vertical asymptotes because this is just a removable discontinuity. It's not a infinite discontinuity. If we had an infinite discontinuity, that's where we have vertical asymptotes. So we'll do the limit now as x approaches five from the negative side. This is a little bit different. For this, we can still bring this part down, right? And we can get rid of the x minus ones because now we can just cancel them off, forget them, don't care about them anymore. They're losers. All right, I need to stop going so hard on these x minus ones. Um, if you plug in five from the negative side, right, the numerator, again, this is the same idea as one of these problems from before, right? The numerator is not gonna be zero, it's not gonna be infinity, we don't care about it, right? All we care about is, is, if it's, is it gonna be positive or negative? Here we know that you know this is a five, this is a six. These are positive numbers. And so we know that we're getting a positive numerator. Okay, but this denominator blows up. It, it, it doesn't blow up, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And so it blows the entire fraction up. Okay, so we know that we're going to infinity or negative infinity, but which one is it? It depends on whether this, this denominator is gonna be negative or positive. How do we know? We're going to five from the negative side and that means the values of x that we're plugging in are gonna be like 4.8, 4.9, 4.95, 4.99, right? They're all gonna be smaller than five. And so, well, we're going to get a negative denominator. Okay? And so we end up with a negative infinity, not a positive infinity. Okay? And uh, I guess another way you could see this, now that I'm just thinking about it, uh, this is a x squared plus x, right? And so you can see here that the higher power of x is in the numerator, not the denominator. Just a another way that you could think about this. I'm trying to, I'm trying to bring as many things full circle as I can right now. Hopefully it's not too overwhelming. Okay, but let's try this exact same thing, but now we're talking about from the positive side, right? Of, of five. Nothing changes in the, the numerator here. We still have something positive, right? But the only time something will change is in the denominator, right? Now we're talking about values of x that are just a little bit larger than five, like 5.1, 5.05, 5.01, right? And so now instead of getting negative numbers in the denominator, you'll get positive numbers. And so rather than going to negative infinity, you're gonna go to positive infinity, okay? And so, yeah, you know, here we get a infinite discontinuity. So that means there is a vertical asymptote at X equals five. Okay. And I believe that's all the question was asking, right? You said, find the horizontal and vertical asymptotes. We said there was no horizontal asymptotes. We said there was a vertical asymptote at X equals five. Awesome. So last question here, and this is a nicer example. Okay. This is a, just a classic end behavior question, right? Classic end behavior from like Algebra 2 and uh, pre-calc. But now we're gonna use limits a little bit more. Then, you know, like, like we're gonna use limits, but it's still kind of the same idea as Algebra 2 and pre-calc. Okay, so for this question, right, what we wanna do is we wanna sketch the graph of the function below using the zeros and its limits at x approaches infinity and x approaches negative infinity, right? The limits at x approaches infinity and negative infinity, right? That's what m behavior is. We're trying to figure out, well, you know, as this curve goes, blah, 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 what happens as it goes on and on and on in the x equals negative infinity direction, right? And what happens as it goes in the infinity, in the, that's that's not that's not how you say that. I don't know why I'm saying it that way. Um, what happens as you go forever in the left in the negative direction and what happens is you go forever in the in the positive direction okay that's a little bit better i'm not even going to edit that out either just because I, I want you to feel my pain <laughs> um anyways so what are the zeros of this function right we'll start off with the easy part we'll start off with the non-calc part the zeros of this function 
right? That's where this thing becomes zero. And well, where is that? Well, since we already have these broken into linear factors, right? Where we have, you know, like a, a just a an x and some constant, right? That's called a linear factor. Even an x is a linear factor, right? Because you get a line out of it. And so, you know, this already tells you, well, we have an, if we have an x equals two, that could make this thing zero, right? Because we'd have a zero here and zero multiplied by anything will be zero. Okay, we could also have a negative one, that would make this zero. We could also have a positive one, that would make everything zero. So those are our three zeros. So we're gonna plot them on a graph down here. All right, awesome. We have one, two, and negative one. All right, and so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these and I'm gonna use some limits. We're just gonna look at what happens to this thing, you know, the M behavior as X approaches negative infinity and X approaches infinity, okay? As X approaches infinity, like everything here is positives, right? Like the, this'll be positive, right? We're getting, really big in X's, right? And so everything is just gonna be positive and it's gonna blow up, right? So hopefully you can see how this would be infinity. But let's change this now. Let's do the exact same thing. But let's do it with negative infinity now. Things get a little more tricky now. Okay. The only way that we would have got a negative infinity before is if we had something like a negative X minus one here, then we would have got like a negative infinity, right? But we didn't have that. We just all had like positive X's. Here we have negatives being plugged in for X, right? And so things get a little trickier. We have a negative here, right? It's going to be a negative and extremely larger number, but it's being taken to an even power. So that makes this thing positive. Now, for this one, right, we have a extremely large negative number, it's being taken to an odd power, so it actually becomes negative, it stays negative, right? Same thing for this guy. It's being taken to an odd power, you can think of a one as being there. So, again, we get infinity, right? Because negative times a negative is a positive. So we know the end behavior now, we know the zeros, we can plot this function. Okay, and just to give me a little more room here, I'm gonna write the zeros like this so I can move everything up just a, just a hair. I wanna give myself enough room to fit this all on one page. This is the break of the PDF. Okay, so I'm gonna start at infinity, okay? And I'm gonna start weaving through these points, right? But you'll notice something, right? If I just start at infinity and I start weaving through these zeros, I end up, right, as x approaches infinity, I end up going to negative infinity in the y direction, right? I end up going down this way, right? As I go this way, I end up going like that. So, you know, but we said here, the limit as x approaches infinity is infinity, not negative infinity, right? And so these don't seem to be matching up with what we just graphed here. And that's because we care about the multiplicity of these values, right? Remember that if the multiplicity, right? If the exponent here on the linear factor, if it's even, then all that happens is that you kind of just like bounce off the X axis, right? You just kind of kiss it, right? And so we have to keep that in mind. So at x equals two, that's the only place we have a even exponent. And so we're just actually gonna bounce off the x-axis. We're not gonna go through. So let's keep that in mind. We're gonna go through here. We're gonna go through here. And then we're gonna bounce off here. And there you go. That is your graph. Doesn't look amazing, but that's the best I could do for now. Um, but yeah, so that is it for this video. So I hope this helped you and do remember that I have this uh, full calculus course in the description down below. For full Calc 1 course, uh, I'm able to you know, help you one-on-one uh, -on -one if you're struggling with anything. I have full practice problems on 
all these videos uh, that we can go through together. It's just going to help you retain everything that you've learned in this video and help you pretty much just absolutely dominate in any calc course that you take. So if you're interested in that, definitely click the link in the description down below. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helped and I'll see you in the next one.